Welcome to Low Life Problems, episode 465. The chain of events that has got us to this point is basically this. So we lowered the van. Okay, yeah, it's great. Damn, those wheels look good, don't they? Let's get the light out like, so you can just get the, the daylight on. Don't they look really cool? Anyway, I digress. This is a coil sprung live rear end, so it's basically on an arm. This is the rear arm, okay? It pivots on there, and these two are attached to the diff. What we did is we went, and they normally sit like about that, and they went, okay, let's lower it four inches. So, which is all well and good, except that the diff um, is attached to this, and as you go up, now my diff's pointing down at a really shitty angle, and of course it flogged out the pinion bearing very quickly. If you've got like, say here's your gearbox, and there's, a, there's, your, there's your pinion on your tail shaft, and here's your diff. As long as they are in line, it, well not in line, at the same angle, you won't have any troubles. If they're, you know, like that or like that, it doesn't matter. But if they're like that, then the how the two unis work is you get a whip, whoosh, it, it speeds up and slows down, it gets a vibration, it chops out the, um, the pinion bearing in the diff really quickly. There's two ways you can do this actually. So, when we put in the uh, limited slip diff, I thought what I'll do is I'll change the pinion angle on the, uh, on the diff itself and drill some holes and I'll show you that in a minute. And well, actually I'll show you now. Point up, look. I can't actually do this on a hoist because I need the weight on the back, uh, I need the van's weight on the back wheel. I mean, you could do it on a hoist, but it'd be low down and you'd have to crawl under it anyway. What I did when we put the limited slip diff in is I re-drilled the holes here so I could rotate this forward. That one, there's, there's sort of no room. This has got a bit of meat here. So um, if I undid this bolt, redrilled those holes and then rotated the diff, um, which would bring, of course, the nose of the diff upwards, right? And correct the angle. The problem is it also brought the diff forward. So when we went in, belted the crap out of the engine mount, that pushed everything back, engine, gearbox, tail shaft, smacko, straight into the pinion bearing, which is, again, buggered. So I thought what we'll do is we'll try and correct that, that pinion angle again, um, see if we can fix that up. So what I've done, light tips turned around again is see here's the arm that i was showing you a minute ago what i've done is i've raised that pivot point and moved it backwards so actually at this end we've got like three fingers the wheels are, are more more wheelbase so it drifts really good <laughs> we, a, a bit more wheelbase so it's pushed the wheels back and i thought okay um we'll get under here and and pull the diff center out and take it around to my diff guys and they can put a new pinion bearing in it. But I thought what I might do at the same time is um, actually measure those two angles and see actually how close we are. Now this at the moment, when we did the front here, we moved that one back to the original point. Um, so I'm wondering if we actually need more, because we're so bloody far up, that we need to swivel that back. We couldn't go up much further with this either, because if you look here, there's the chassis. There's not a heap of room here, but that actually gives us quite a bit of travel. So we're actually not looking too bad, but um, I do need to measure these diff angles. Here we are with a protractor and a level. And we put that there, and then we swing this around to till the bubble's sitting in the middle, which is about there. It's really bloody cold here at the moment and windy. And we have 10 degrees. I just have to do the same thing down here on the back of the gearbox. So we've got 10 degrees on one end and we've got four degrees on the, on the back end. So I measured that a few times and um, it was all around 10 degrees and five degrees. 
I know we're up, up at an angle at the moment, but there's a difference of five degrees there. So, so our diff is still pointing down in relation to the gearbox, so we need to bring it up. So I think if I move back to when I pull the diff out to go around the corner to get that, I might, while I'm under there, put it back to the, those extra bolt holes that I drilled, which I think should bring us to just about right. Because now that I've got, now that I've raised the front pivot and pushed it backwards, uh, towards the rear of the van, it's given us that room. So if we do, you know, it's not riding, you know, tail shafts up against the pinion bearing and everything's jammed in there. Um, we fixed up the the uh, engine mount, so that's not going to push the engine back any further, any more rather. And push the diff back. We we should we should have enough there to pull that diff just that little bit, get that angle right. Put a new pinion bearing in it, and hopefully the actual pinion gear and, and um, ring gear aren't totally rooted because nobody will send, sell us the just the gears they want to sell us the whole diff from side to side and that's expensive when you only want two gears anyway let's get a bearing into it I'll get that pulled out tomorrow it's bloody I think my hands are gone numb but it's, it's freezing out there at the moment um yeah so all right pull the diff out tomorrow mmm stinky diff oil and uh, we'll get around the corner and get a new pinion bearing put into it. Our gearbox is at this angle. Our diff is at that angle. Doesn't seem much, but it's enough to bugger things up. So what I need to do, get the front of the diff up. If you imagine our arm, there's the one point it was back like that. God, I, never mind. Yeah, look, you know what I mean. It's, there's two... That's made it worse. So uh, it goes like that. So what I can do is put those ones back, I'll tilt the diff forward so I use those rear holes on the um, on the diff mount, not the arms. Forget the arms, they're just crap. Uh, on the diff itself. So that, that sort of looks like that, and there's a hole there that, and a hole there that these two go onto, right? We'll just soldier on. At this point, I think there's no point. We can't go back there. It's just, yeah, anyway. So our diff's like that. So um, the, the diff is actually pointing out like this. So these two here are fixed and I've got the second hole here. So if we push it back to that hole, that will tilt the whole lot up, won't it? Maybe our five degrees. I think it'll be pretty bloody close. I haven't actually measured it because it's freezing outside, but uh, tomorrow, when it's more than four degrees, I'll, I might even measure it then. Just measure the distance and see what sort of an angle we'll get going from one hole to the other. Once I get that, the diff out and um, have a bit of a play around with it. I'm not pulling the whole diff out, I'm just pulling the pumpkin out, so take it around the corner. I've been downstairs and I've measured up the arm and the, um, the, the redrilled bolt hole and I'll do it out on paper and we'll see what sort of figure we can come up with. Just ignore that bit. The important part is the centers from the top to the bottom is 124 millimeters. And the bolt holes, the new bolt holes, are drilled 13 millimeters back. Let's find out with yonder protractor, shall we? Okay, so that's uh, the tilt that we will get. If we put that one along like that, and about the center, and come down, 6.5 degrees. So we need around about five degrees, and this is going to give us 6.5. So I figure that 1.5 degrees is better than five degrees, approximately. So we'll do that. Now I've got to go and take the diff out. Stinky diff oil. Yeah. Actually, the other thing while I think about it, this will push the diff forward 13 millimetres, but that's okay, because when, when we lifted it, we actually pushed it back 45. So we're still apples on our uh, distance. There's a bit of slide room on the yoke on the back of the uh, gearbox, on the spline, for it to slide in and out. So we're actually looking at pretty good. That's going to come out pretty close. Put this new diff bearing in it should be quiet because it's freaking noisy at the moment um and yeah we're all good to go
Put something down, two seconds later I've lost. Alrighty, so it's out. Um, it was just catching on the axle on this side. I needed just a little bit of pressure on it just to pull it out of the way and then she just popped out. As you can see, it's out. There she blows in the back of the ute. So I'll take that around the corner and get them to put a new seal and a new pinion bearing, get everything lined up. And in the meantime, I will um, adjust that angle down here. And when that's finished, we'll put it all back in again. I took those around to James, that, well, the diff sent around to James, and um, he did a quick spin and said, oh, that feels all right. And I went, oh, well, it's leaking at least, but yeah, it's, he's, and then he's, <laughs> What sort of noise was it making? Was it doing this? And we proceeded to make all sorts of, you know, whiny, wah-wah noises at each other. Um, and he said it could be the axle bearings. Of course he was right. It's lovely and grindy, that one, and it goes clickety-click. So this is this one. I'm off back around the corner to see James and give him those as well, and he can put new bearings on there. And that's the way she goes. Well, I mean, the, the diff needs fixing up anyway. Just make sure everything's lined up because it had been punched pretty hard uh, in that that um, pinion bearing, so the seal was leaking. Anyway, so let's get let's get the whole bloody lot done. No, it's uh, it's it's just a continuity issue. We actually filmed this bit before I grew the beard. While it's up and doing the hover car thing, we might get some other work done too. Alrighty, I've just pulled up at these guys. And I've got some extra stuff that I want him to do here. Look what else is here. Isn't that a little cutie? And there he is. Here's Luke. Hello. How you going, buddy? Good, how are you? So all the bike seats are done. But the van seats, look at that. Oh, so much better. Thanks, buddy. No done worries. a great job. All right, so we've got to chuck those in the van and, and um, take them back and build them back in. I've been driving the van in and out with the, uh, just on it, sitting on a card, oh, yeah. cardboard. That'll be uncomfortable. <laughs> yeah. Small fan to please miss. Okay, just back from Luke's and uh, he did send me a couple of pictures of what was underneath the old stuff. The driver's side like seat cushion under your butt, he just tossed it. <laughs> uh, now we just got to chuck him in and because I, like, I'm busting to take it for a drive because of all of the stuff we did, sorted out the diff, fixed the, the, the axle bearing, all that sort of stuff. Get these seats in and like we'll be good to go. Okay, I got one of the seats in, and yeah, the headrest. So the, at some stage, somebody's adapted these on, I don't know if they're genuine fishnets, and put some weird blue stuff on the fishnet stuff. Anyway, everything's, you can see the bolts. Everything is rusty. So we've, as you can see, there's, there's the post, and they've just sort of welded a tab on there, and it sort of goes in there like that. But, um, Everything is rusty, so we pulled everything out, and the only thing I haven't been able to find is those. I can only find these, so I might just chop them off and uh, whack them in there. A fairly comprehensive sort of a job, if that's how it's been done. But yeah. So much better. All right, so now I'm hoping if we give it a quick fang around the block uh, that it's not um, noisy. 
So, crossing my fingers. Are we going for a quick finger in a bloop? That's for uh, our New Zealand viewers. <laughs> it's been a long time since I did that. I'm actually from Wellington. It still goes, lights on, because it's rainy and crappy outside. Let's the other thing we've got to do, because I stood the camber up, uh, we've got to, like it's a bit nose high at the moment, so we'll have to bring the ride height down a fraction. But, let's see what this thing sounds like. spot about there so I figure it's from pushing my glasses up I don't know you get your glasses in there and when they're new and they fit nicely and then they loosen up or your head shrinks I don't know I don't know the mechanics of the whole deal but got middle of the forehead right between the eyes anyway